What's up guys, I'm Kenny from Upscale Lures and this is the F3 show number 39 where I take my fishing newsletter and I turn it into video format so I can put it on YouTube and share it with you guys. Let's get started. Section number one, it is the video pick of the month which actually I found two videos on a, it is a fully functional 3D printed fly fishing reel uh, that is put to the test so you guys can check out the, uh, the links below. Uh, the first one, this guy from New Zealand, uh, he was out catching some trout uh, with this thing, and uh, he did have a little bit of an issue with it where I, mean, I think it basically fell apart, um, but he claims it was user error, that if you would have glued it better, he wouldn't have this problem. So I would definitely recommend, if you do do this, um, to super glue it. I, the super glue just really seems to bond uh, to 3D printed parts. Um, what did he said it cost him uh, six dollars and eighty cents to get it printed he had some other company do it if you did it yourself it would be even cheaper and uh, yeah he said he's he said it he thinks it would be good you know for smaller trout not not some you know big old uh, 15 pound trout or whatever but he had he had a pretty good uh, pretty good confidence that it would work and then there was another video um, I'm pretty sure this one was in the states and uh, this guy tried it out, and uh, he, he did pretty good as well. Uh, he was catching some uh, planter trout, and uh, let's see here. He's, he was thinking that it could handle up to 15-inch trout. So um, I still think it's pretty crazy that this is something uh, you could print in your own house, in your own living room, kitchen, wherever you have your 3D printer. You could 3D print your own reel and go out and fish with this thing. I think that is freaking amazing. I just I love that. Um, and then it, it is uh, free for the STL file. So if you have a 3D printer, um, it doesn't cost you anything to get the, uh, the files for that. Um, and I believe in the first video, um, he said it was about a six hour print. So pretty amazing stuff. I, th I think it's so cool, so interesting. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested, the two videos will be linked below. For section number two it is fishing news of the month. And if you're looking for a quieter, lower maintenance, and a less polluting outboard that can last a full day of fishing, um, electric, uh, an electric full-size outboard might be a way, way to go. I did not realize, when I first dove into this, I did not realize how, um, at least it, it seems to be that this is becoming more popular. Like, you see electric trolling motors, obviously, but I never knew that it was starting to move into the direction of like full size outboards. Obviously it's still pretty new. I think it is fairly expensive, um, but the benefits, cost benefit, you know, the, I guess that's, that's up to you to decide. Um, the first video that I found uh, was a, uh, let's see here, a 350 horsepower uh, outboard that was switched over um, with uh, Tesla motor so I'm assuming it's like the axle motor from what it looks like that you know what powers you know one of the tires and they basically just put it you know right on top they take out the engine and then they put that in there and you know whatever needs to be done so everything lines up right you gotta hook the battery up to it and everything um, but yeah pretty pretty crazy um, so yeah all, all these links will be below and this guy or this this company what is it? Hyper Electric Marine. Um, here, I'll actually read it here. Hyper Electric Marine says our first product is a 350 horsepower outboard electric motor inverter that would propel a 24 foot uh, tri tune to a top speed of over 60 miles an hour with a range of 40 miles average. We can build, we have built and tested five prototypes, 350 horsepower motors since the company's inception in June of 2019. So that's crazy. This, it seems like there's there's no power loss, it seems like, with the electric motor. If you can still get up to 60 miles an hour, that is pretty crazy. So yeah, that is that is the first video. Uh, the second video I got is with Jamie Heineman, um, and this was back in 2012. So this was eight years ago, and he was uh, making a homemade version of a electric motor. Um, he, he's, I'm pretty sure he's, I'm not sure, I think he's in California, but he got some, um, electric motors from cars. I don't think they were Tesla. It was some company that went out of business. Um, he got them super cheap and he, he puts this all together 
And he was saying like a brand new motor would cost you what seven eight grand. I mean probably more depending on what you're looking for. Um, but he put his together for it was it was fifteen hundred dollars I believe. And granted this was eight years ago, but so pretty you know if you have the skills to tinker around with that stuff you could make an electric motor for a fraction of the cost. I think that'd be amazing. Anthony Jones has a pretty good video. Um, where he goes uh, in depth of his particular uh, electric motor that he has, like his tactics on making it last longer, uh, like the run time, uh, how he set up the battery and everything. Pretty detailed. It's pretty good. I definitely wanted to add to that video, so that will be linked below as, all, as well. Next one is uh, Boating New Zealand. Um, this is the best one I could find where he shows a comparison of the sound, um, from a Mercury two-stroke to, I think he's got two other uh, electric uh, outboards that he kind of compares it to, so you can get a really good compares comparison of the sound. So, um, yeah, I dove into this, and I did not realize how much was going to pop up. I just kept finding more and more stuff. I found it super interesting. Uh, these guys are saying that a lot of the lakes are becoming electric only. You know, they don't want people polluting the lakes with the gas and oils. That's all dripping in there. I, even sound pollution, I guess, you know, you don't really think about that. Like if you had 50 boats with gas powered versus ones with electric, I mean, that's got to be quieter, right? And then for us as fishermen, um, of course you want something that's quieter is why you're using a trolling motor, right? So you can kind of get up where you need to go without, you know, starting that noisy, noisy old uh, uh, gas, gas outboard. So I think there's a lot of benefits to this. I, I'm, I'm, for sure that it's going to slowly push more into the electric <clears throat> outboard thing. And yeah, I think, I think I'm only scratching the surface on this. I, I find it pretty interesting. So yeah, I got four videos. You guys can check them out in the link below. Section number three, it is Upscale Lures News of the Month. And I've been working on a prototype uh, bobber for over a year now. Uh, me and my buddy went out uh, fishing last year. We did a little late fishing trip. And uh, we usually do some pan fishing. And uh, so I decided to whip up some bobbers. And uh, they ended up working really well. Like I was very surprised with how well they worked. We kind of caught a ton of fish on them. My buddy said it worked fantastic for them. Um, so I designed it, uh, designed the bobbers so it lies flat, uh, so it casts far, and then it has high uh, visibility. So I designed it so it lies flat because I think like if it's wavy, and you have a bobber like this, it's kind of hard to tell if you have a bite or not, but if you have the bobber that lies flat, even if it's wavy, it kind of hugs the water until you get a bite and then it'll kind of pop up. And then I also wanted it to cast far, so I made it a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, it has a little bit more plastic in there so you can really lob it out there and be precise with it where you want it to go. The smaller bobbers, it's hard to get it to where you want it to go, then you're kind of almost required to put a split shot on there. And with this one, you don't have to put a split shot on there and you can still lob it out uh, pretty dang far. So I wanted that, which is check that off the list. And then um, I, wanted, I wanted it to be high visibility. You wanna be able to see the thing. So a lot of times you have the glare on the water, um, just even if you cast it that far out, you might have more visibility issues. So I made it, a, this is the 10 inch version. Um, so it's it's, you know, pretty easy to see, you have some bright colors on there. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I call it the better bobber. So I'm trying to make it better, trying to make it different. It lies flat, casts far, and it high, has high visibility. So that was the that was the older version um, of the uh, of the bobber, what I started out with. And then here's the newer version um, that I've been currently working on. Um, I'm doing it in multiple pieces so I can switch up the colors on it, tweak the design a little bit, make it a little bit more durable where it needs it. And uh, yeah, couldn't, couldn't be happier with it. So hopefully um, I can have this upscale lures approved pretty soon and I can have it available uh, to you guys. We're rolling right into section number four, which is the catch of the month. If you like to be featured on the next newsletter and F3 show, you can email us your fish picks uh, for a chance to be featured and the next F3 show or newsletter. Um, so this this month, no one no one sent anything. So um, I got out. I did a little bit of fishing, 
And uh, yeah, here in Wisconsin, the fishing's a little bit slow this time of year, um, but I still managed to get my first catch um, on my new uh, Better Bobber prototype. So I was pretty excited about that. Uh, I got a bluegill on there. I had to go to three ponds in two days to manage to get uh, one fish to bite here. I had a couple, you know, something was messing around with it, but I ended up getting this, uh, you know, decent, decent bluegill on there. <laughs> I was pretty, pretty excited about it, um, even though it wasn't the biggest. But uh, yeah, I went to a couple other ponds, and uh, you know, this time of year, it's just, it's just too dang cold. Uh, I think even at this point, uh, we we we're starting to get that little, uh, little bit of thin sheet of ice on the uh, the rivers and ponds. So not not much fishing left uh, here in Wisconsin besides ice fishing that should be should be coming up shortly. So uh, yeah, um, hopefully you guys uh, you know send in your fish picks for next month so we can uh, uh, show off some of your guys' catches and I don't have to. Uh, show off all my old fish picks. Moving right on to the featured item of the month, uh, which is the Better Bobber, um, which is, should be coming soon here. Um, I'll actually go grab it so I can show you guys. So here we go, here is the Better Bobber. Um, still still needs a little bit of work, just wanna make sure everything's uh, to upscale lure standard. Um, so yeah, this is the 10 inch and I have it in uh, separate pieces like unlike the uh, first version so I can uh, put up some different colors on it um, you got the classic uh, red and white on here and then uh, right here uh, in order to uh, lock your line in you just got to pinch the line you wrap it around three to five times and you just pull that up and simple as that you have that locked in uh, it stays nice and tight you know when you need to adjust it push it right up, you know, unwind it, you know, adjust your length, lock it back down so you're ready to go. So yeah, I wanted uh, something a little bit bigger, uh, bigger profile, higher visibility. Um, it lies flat, uh, so I think you get like better sensitivity out of it. So see if you, if you have a bite. Um, and then if you do, you know, if you add enough split shot, you can have it stand up. So like if you are in a situation where you have like I was fishing the other day, actually, when I caught that bluegill, the sun was going down and I was getting just crazy glare off the water and it was hard to see it. So what I did is I did add some split shots so it stood up and then it was a little bit more visible. So you have that option, you know, to lie flat, you know, a little bit more sensitivity, I think, or, you know, whatever you prefer. Or if you want it, you know, something like this, which does make it a, a bit more uh, visible um, when you're in... Um, like that situation where you have a ton of glare or if you're you're really lobbing it out there so um, yeah try, trying to get this finalized uh, just getting everything put together and uh, we should have this come out coming out pretty soon here so for section number six it is the survey of the month um, this is also this was last month's survey as well but I would still really appreciate if you guys check this out um, I recently updated my website and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with it, but I'm always trying to make improvements. So if you guys would like to check it out, um, I think you guys would you know, just be interested to check it out. It looks, looks fantastic, it's interactive. You got videos playing and all our different uh, plastics and spinners and stuff. Um, so you guys could check it out and then help me um, you know, tweak it, make it a little bit better. Uh, by taking uh, the survey, take you like two minutes uh, to take it, a pretty short survey. And uh, yeah, just it really, really helps us out to, uh, to make our website better. Um, all those links will be in the description below. Section number seven is the lure giveaway winner of the month. Uh, if you want to be entered for this, you have to sign up for the first Fishing Friday newsletter, which that is the email format of basically uh, the F3 show, which is the video show on the internet on youtube and then i also have the newsletter um so if you uh want to be entered all you have to do is sign up takes you two seconds to sign up and then i do a lure giveaway every single month and you'll be entered every single month to win it's not just the month you sign up um so this month's winner is orade at gmail.com i only put out the last five digits or characters of your email. I'm not gonna put out the whole thing, so if that's you, uh, make sure to contact me, go through my website, Instagram, 
or just uh, reply through the uh, newsletter as well, that would work. So yeah, super easy to sign up. Um, the link will be below and uh, you'll be entered to win every single month for that. So now we'll slide into a brand new section here that I just added, which is section number eight. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it every single month, but we'll see, uh, which is the bonus video of the month. And all I need to say <laughs> is no comment needed. And that is the F3 show number 39, the internet podcast YouTube show on the internet. That was actually a newsletter that I turned into a YouTube video so you guys can see it on YouTube. And I share it on Twitter and I share it on Facebook. And it would be fantastic if you watched it like 100 more times for the YouTube algorithm. And if you like to fish, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. So it helps get it out to more fishermen and fisherwomen like you. That would be fantastic to help support me uh, to make more videos and share it with more like-minded people. That would be great and appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.